Well, we've had a lot of vehicles moving across this yard to try to finish up this exterior. And now that that's virtually done, we are all set to move ahead with our landscape. But first, we want to take care of our irrigation system. Well, Mark Lineman is heading up the crew. How's it going? Good, good. Yourself? Good, thank you. So, it looks like one of the first things you like to do when you come out is you like to flag off the area. I like to flag out the area to know what kind of heads and how many heads we need total. And there's also a couple other things you need to do some figuring on. We need to figure out what the gallonage for the house comes out of and how many zone heads we can put on a zone based on that gallonage. Now, do you guys work off a plan? Yes, but the plan is just an estimate to figure out what I need. When it comes down to the actual yard, you start flagging it out. That gives you the actual what, what the yard is, where the trees are and everything else that needs to be covered. So once you figure everything out, then you're ready to pull some pipe. Yep, we'll start pulling the pipe right away. We'll start with the lateral lines first. Okay, so what's a lateral line? Lateral lines are the headlines, where the heads run. So if there's five heads on a zone, we'll run all, pull all five heads first. Now to pull the line, is you're, you're using a vibratory plow. Correct. What it does is it puts the blade in the ground and it pulls the pipe underneath the ground. It's less intrusive, especially if it's grass. Obviously, this yard is dirt. So once you get the lateral lines in connecting the heads, then you're ready to pull main lines. When we pull the main line, it's under pressure at all times, and there's a low-voltage cable that goes right with that. The low-voltage cable goes to the valves that control each zone where the lateral lines are on. There is a lot of hand digging to do. you got to dig it on obstacles, utilities, you got to dig in your boxes, and uh, to make all your pipe connections. So they're putting me to work. <laughs> So once all the pipe is pulled, then you can start connecting things. Yes, we connect them up with a number of different fittings. We'll use a combination T if it's on the T or an end up that's on the end up and every head gets put on this flexible pipe. And I see you have a few different heads that you're working with here. Yeah, what we'll do is we'll have a different type of heads for the applications that are needed. We've got the, the large head that pops up four inches and it rotates and it does 30 feet or better. The medium head, which is rotates finger things, so that does it. It'll go up to about 25 feet. And then there's a spray head that does a smaller surf turf areas, which is for more of a mist. And you're also going to be doing a little bit of drip irrigation. Yes, we're actually putting in some drip lines wherever planting beds are at to be able to water them efficiently as well. So here's what Mark was talking about. This is the actual valve assembly. Here you have your main water supply, and these are the three different zones that go out into the yard. So when the controller calls for a zone to come on and turn on, that'll open up any one of these valves, which it calls for, and send the water out to the uh, sprinklers. Simple Simon. Now you also have a few things that help kind of control and run the system. Yes, we do. You should have a rain sensor by law. In Minnesota, they are required. And there's also another one, which is actually a weather station, which is the application we're going to be using today. And it actually dictates how long it's going to run based on temperature and solar radiation. And of course, there's also a controller. Yes, the controller that runs all the zones to be able to water the certain amount of times that it needs. And of course, the controller, we'll talk about more when we set it up. Correct. Correct.